Hi guys! Oh my god, I feel like it's been so long <laughs> since I've just like been able to say that. I know I've been gone for a minute and I promise it's all going to make sense really, really soon. And when I say soon, I mean like in the next couple of weeks soon as to why I've been so gone and inconsistent and just all over the place. Like I promise y'all, it's going to make sense and I just can't talk about it right now. But there are certain things I can talk about, okay? I can talk about my new relationship. I can talk about how I got a job, lost that job. I can talk about how I'm moving soon. I can talk about how I think I'm gonna give up new age. There's a lot of tea to spill. I can talk about other stuff. I, you guys, y'all know there's always something going on in my life. So anyway, grab your wine, grab your snacks. I have a matcha. I I love making matchas from home now because it saves you literally so much money. I was spending so much money on matchas, like $8 in this economy. It feels so good to just come on here and talk to y'all again. So I'm obviously gonna get ready. Hello. Like, that's why we're at my vanity. Get back, relax, get your wine, get your snacks. I was getting to this tea, so we're just gonna jump right into it because I'm just so eager to talk to you guys. Like, I just wanna, hold on, let me put some earrings on because I look like a boy. You guys didn't know by now. I'm in a relationship. Your girl has a man. Like, what the hell? It's just like, do you guys remember this time last year where I made that video on how I went on a date? I was like, talking to this guy, it was like, it was so short lived. It was only for a few weeks. But I had been, you know, single for, for quite some time. Something about when I talked to that guy and went on that date, and then he just like ended up going back to his ex girlfriend. I just lost all hope. Like, I really did. And it wasn't because of the person, because let's be real, like, I back and I don't care about that person in that way like of course like this person has feelings and they deserve to be cared about i just don't really care about them in that way because i looked back and realized it was more so all talk you know like when somebody's just all talk and no action that's exactly what it was and i look back now and i'm like i definitely fell way too fast and for no reason because what was the credentials of what i was falling for like let's be for real kind of lost, lost all hope in a sense of like every time i meet somebody something happens like things just don't work out for me something is always happening i was sick of was myself like i was sick of myself you know falling for these men so fast without boundaries and without really knowing who they are because the thing is is that talk really is cheap and people can say so much about what they're going to do and who they're going to be i mean look at my daughter's father like when he first found out I was pregnant, it was all talk about, you know, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to be this, and where has he been? Somebody please tell me. It's just like when you fall for words and not actions, you really do fuck yourself over because words don't mean anything. I mean, of course, words are nice. Like if somebody says, I love you or you're beautiful, like I am a sucker for words of affirmation. However, if somebody says, I love you, but then they go and cheat on you, like those words are obsolete. Those words are empty. They have absolutely no meaning because of the action behind that, what that person did, like the action behind the words. So words matter, but when the actions and the words align, that's when you know somebody truly cares about you and loves you and i realized for years all i was doing with these men like i just look back at past relationships or like talking to a guy and we were getting to know each other to potentially go on a date just the words did not match with the actions and i have always just felt words my whole life and i realized you know a lot of times when you look at your life especially relationships platonic romantic whatever you look at god i just I, i've always just been fucked over like i've always been fucked over in relationships i've haven't had a whole lot of healthy ones in my life you have to stop looking externally and look internally because here's the thing like if you do an equation a bunch of times and the answer is always wrong you don't change the answer you change the equation i was the equation and, and the answers that i was getting were the equations that i was putting in which was like my lack of boundaries my lack of self-worth um i don't want to say self-respect i feel like i've always respected myself but i feel like i just didn't love myself enough to give myself a chance to actually let a quality man come into my life and that's takes a lot i was like literally talking to a subscriber the other day because she booked a one-on-one -on -one call with me which if you want to do that just dm me on instagram and we can get you set up it's just like 50 bucks for an hour and she was telling me about her issues that she has had with relationships and with men and she was me like a year ago she was me a year ago she was me two years ago and i'm like girl let me give you the blueprint so you don't have to go through what i did stop going for the men that you're going for because that's what's messing you up it's not you well it is you but it's not like 
you're just like attracting all of these men that are toxic or narcissistic or whatever it's that you're letting them in because that's how that, that that's what you feel you deserve because that's how you feel about yourself do you get what i'm saying because it's not about what you attract it's about what you let in and what you let in or who you let in i should say is directly correlated with how you feel about yourself you feel good about yourself and you love yourself you're not gonna let in a man who's unsure of you you're going to let in a man who shows you every single day through his actions that he cares about you and he cares about building towards something lasting with you you're not going to let somebody in who's like well i'm just looking for like a friends with benefits or i'm just looking for like a fling i'm not looking for a relationship when you are looking for a relationship i just realized i was like giving chances to men who just were not ready to be with somebody like me and that's okay because that's who you are and i can't change that but i think what we do often as women is we do try to change that we do say to ourselves oh well, maybe if we stick around longer he will start to like me or maybe if i show him that like i cook really good or that i can you know throw it down in the bedroom maybe just maybe he'll pick me and he'll choose me and like we've all been pick me's before if you say that you haven't let's be so for real right now like please stop with the freaking self-righteousness like it's really annoying <laughs> we've all been there before have been there so girl you don't have to be because listen to me when i say that doesn't get you anywhere. The only thing that makes a man want you is a man who wants you. The only thing that keeps a man is a man who wants to be kept. And that's point blank period. So what I had to do was like stop trying so hard and just like let somebody come to me and work on myself. And that's why I started to do just like really focusing on me. I started really going like head first into therapy and talking about really uncomfortable truths um, about myself that I did not like. How sometimes I self-sabotage things in my life because I'm afraid of getting hurt. And sometimes I create scenarios and things inside of my head that actually aren't actually happening because that's all I've been used to in past relationships. And and so like if somebody like stops answering me for a little bit, I'm like, oh my God, is there another girl? Are they cheating X, Y, and Z? Because that's what I was used to in my past relationships. So that's not fair because that means that if you have that mindset already, like that preconceptional mindset of something bad is going to happen, the shoe is going to drop. And obviously you're not going to be able to let in somebody of quality because they're not going to want to put up with that. They're going to be like, go fix yourself because I'm not going to pay for the mistakes of your past person it's like you know don't bleed on people who didn't cut you type of thing I knew that i wasn't going to be able to have a good relationship until i dissolved that mindset and don't get me wrong it's a work in progress every single day to dissolve that mindset because i've been used to that for the past 29 30, i'm 30 now what the fuck can we talk about it real quick i turned 30 february and girl i swear like 30 has came with so many like what <laughs> Like, I cannot wait to share with you guys the tea of everything that's been happening, but all within divine timing. Just give me a few more weeks. Anyway, the person that I'm with now is amazing. I love them so much. They're everything I've ever wanted and more. It's healthy. It's happy. It's reciprocation. Like, I, like, they equally pour into me as much as I pour into them. It's not like a one- I've been in so many one-sided relationships, and I don't feel that way in this one at all. This is somebody I actually used to date. <laughs> like back in the day and yes there is a story time about them but we're not gonna talk about that um it was more so like a right person wrong time type of thing which i do believe in that 100 percent and you know if we would have worked out back in the day it wouldn't have worked out because we both had so much growing to do him a little bit more than me but like definitely me as well and i just feel like we weren't ready and we met a little bit too soon and we both had to go through a lot over the past years to kind of work on ourselves and we were separated for a long time girl a long long time no contact no anything like at, we i didn't even like know what his number was like that's how like long we were apart and the way that we came back together was just like very organic and it was very raw and it was very just like it just felt right it just felt right some things have happened along the way of course that have like tested it but like one thing that i've learned is that the enemy only tests what's valuable to you so like if you have a relationship and you feel like things are just happening and you're kind of like what the fuck like why is this happening um, the enemy will literally only attack what's valuable to you So I just have to like remind myself of that literally every single day that my relationship, you know, is so valuable to me You know, I love this man so fucking much. I would do anything for him and Obviously, it's gonna be tested if it's that valuable, you know, so 
yeah, I'm just, I just, I, oh my god, I'm just so crazy. Like, I told my nail tech I was in a relationship. And I waited a while, because you guys know, like, with my dating life, I'm, like, very private. With everything else, I'm, like, such an open book. My dating life, I'm, like, very private. And she's like, you're the most single person I know. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but she was, like, really happy for me. Everyone's just really happy for me. Like, everybody is so happy for me. And when I did first post him, which was on Valentine's Day, I got so many overwhelming messages i'm gonna post some of them and like i literally started to cry because it's like when you guys have known <laughs> what i've been through because of the stories that i share and it's just oh my god i'm getting emotional it's just so nice to like for people to just see me being happy <laughs> like because that doesn't happen a lot and i just literally started to cry because they're like you deserve this Dakota like I've got so many messages even from just like people who follow me that I don't know at all they were just like you deserve this out of everybody I know like you deserve to be fucking happy and like I'm just so happy for you it's like it was nothing but just really positive messages and it just oh my god it just oh stop no we're not doing this it just made me like really happy because like I said like it's just nice for people to be happy for me and see like you guys have seen what I've been through with just like Adrian with my past you know exes like you guys have seen everything you guys know you guys have a whole digital diary of my whole life thus far like literally it's just so nice for people to just like see me moving on and being happy and I'm just really happy <laughs> like that's really just it not really much else to say about it. I'm just I'm in a good spot I'm very happy. It's someone that I used to date and then we literally just like randomly like came back together. We became really good friends again and built on that friendship and then you know we both realized like obviously there's still feelings there. Let's give it a shot. And it just has been amazing and I'm so happy and I just couldn't ask for a better person in my life and I'll talk about it more as the weeks go by. As time you know goes by I'll open up a bit more about it but for now you know that's the general <laughs> I guess synopsis of my Matt and my relationship and I'm so happy. A lot of you don't even know me in a relationship because I really only have like talked about it not even talked about it just like posted about it on Instagram um I haven't really been posting on here so obviously some of you were like bitch what the fuck and you don't have Instagram a lot of you I, f I found out recently so obviously you guys are like wait what like some bitch since when because <laughs> everyone knows like I've just been single forever like I really have been and of course I've tried to date people but it hasn't worked because you know, I didn't work on myself in the meantime, and I really took that chance and started to work on myself, and the thing about being in a happy relationship, which is why I always suggest for people to start to do the work on, like, your attachment theory, your self-limiting beliefs from childhood, is because when you have a healthy relationship, it triggers a lot of shit. Like, it triggers a lot, and it brings up past things that aren't true, like, in this current relationship, but they have may have been true in the past, and it brings up a lot. Like, it really does. Like, being in a healthy relationship is fucking hard <laughs> after you've been in so many, like, unhealthy ones because... You just, like I said, you have these, like, self-limiting beliefs from your past relationships that you carry with you. It's really important to, like, take that backpack of just, like, self-doubt and self, just, like, deprecation and, like, unpack it and then fill it up with, like, new things. And, you know, people are going to be who they are in the, the day. So if you get into a happy relationship and it doesn't work out, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It just means that, like, people are who they are and sometimes things don't work out. It doesn't mean that's the it's the end of love for you, you know, because I definitely at one point did give up and I was like I just don't care anymore like if it's me and Aubrey for the rest of my life I'm fine knowing that's not true and I'm just here to tell you like look at me as an example like if you do wait and you use your discernment and you are obedient and you do your work and get into your healing bag you can have a healthy relationship sometimes it's not happening because you haven't done the work yet and like I can confidently look back and say that it wasn't happening for me because I had what the ugh hadn't done the work yet so yeah that's my relationship i just hope you guys are happy for me as much as my instagram fam is happy for me and yeah that's the tea on that so some other tea which you guys are gonna be so surprised about because and listen it's still an ongoing battle like my walk with god it's still conflicting i don't know what i want to do yet but i'm like 99.99999 99 percent sure that i am walking away from new age and completely leaving it in the past i'm talking about like getting rid of my tarot decks getting rid of my crystals getting rid of my buddha statues and just completely walking with god and there's a couple of reasons as to why 
I well there, there's a backstory to this so back in 2016 when all that stuff with Adrian happened where you know we were living together and he was cheating on me and then he moved out but then he came back and we were up and down and x y and z I was having a lot of like mental health issues during that time because of the person that I was with I thought that it was just me and things that I neglected like from my childhood or from my past but in actuality it was the person that I was with which was Adrian which was giving me all of this anxiety and self-doubt and he was like the major cause to a lot of my like mental health issues and concerns for that though when he was completely out of my life I started really getting into God um you guys if you don't know I grew up with a parent who had addiction issues with alcohol and one of my parents ended up going to rehab and getting this thing called the 12-step prayer book and it's not just for people who are in AA or went to AA it's, I think everybody should read it there's amazing little prayers in there about just like anything that you could possibly think of whether you're dealing with like self-doubt loneliness um selfishness just like anything in your life there's so many things for you to pray for like you know for deliverance from those things that are bothering you and those addictions and things that are kind of infiltrating and taking over your life and I started to read that and then me starting to read that ended up becoming me getting into like sermons so like I would watch like Pastor Christy Lyles all the time because she always talked about not narcissists necessarily but like counterfeit loves and it would be like oh and like soul ties that's the first time I ever found out about a soul tie which is like when you meet somebody who comes in this nice little pretty package in a bow and you think this person could never do anything wrong to me because they're so clean cut you know, it's like this gift that I've always been wanting. It's in this pretty pink paper and this big bow and it says open me. And you allow that person or that gift to come into your life and it turns out to be the devil in freaking disguise, which was Adrian. Like seriously, the devil in absolute disguise. And so I realized that I had a soul tie with Adrian really bad where it's like, I was taking on all of his demons, I was taking on all of his just like sin, like everything I was taking on, and that was making my life miserable. In order to break a soul tie, you have to go no contact, you have to, and that's what I really started to learn about like narcissists and counterfeit loves, like the ones that come in and they, they learn you and they make you think that they're everything you ever wanted to be. It's like they hear about how all of your exes have cheated on you and so they harp on how they would never cheat on you, but in all actuality they are cheating on you. And it's just really, really scary. And so I started to learn a lot about that from Pastor Christy Lyles. And then me finding Pastor Christy Lyles ended up it turning into me finding Pastor Mike Todd, Jeremy Flowers, like all these people that would just do these, these um, sermons that made sense to me. Because my issue always with growing up, going to church was that I never understood anything. And you can't have a relationship with something you don't understand right so like I could not have a relationship with God if I was going to these you know Sunday sermons and services and not understanding what my pastor was talking about and then we'd go to Sunday school and I wouldn't understand anything that anybody was talking about besides one church that I went to where I had a youth group leader named Lucas Lucas if you're watching this love you for life he's the one that really made me start to understand Christ and God and we'd go on these like retreats to this place called Lake Champion and that's why I started to feel like I had a relationship with God but then that got dissolved anyway so when I started to get into God a lot I was really happy in my life okay like I had my own place I was making you know decent money at my job my relationship with my daughter was amazing like everything was kind of falling together for me in life and then I stupidly let Adrian back into my life because I still loved him and I let him back into my life and then that's when my mental health became really bad again and so I said okay well if, if something's wrong with me I need to get help so like let me go to therapy and so I started going to my therapist and she really did help and I, like god bless her soul I don't think that she meant to put this on to me I think this was a part of my journey honestly I don't regret anything I don't regret her like she's amazing but she is the one that got me into new age and spirituality she was the one that told me you know go get a salt lamp and then the salt lamp turned into the crystals and then the crystals turned into the sage because i was telling her how my worst fear is like home invasion like literally my, i should not even be putting that out there but i rebuke anything that anybody will possibly try to do to me and i know that with god with god within me that nothing bad could happen um but basically 
that's like my biggest fear and so i was telling her that and she was like oh like why don't you go get some sage because if you you know do it around your house you burn it where's my bronzer thank you she's like you know if you go burn it you may feel a sense of peace it's supposed to you know ward out negative energy and i'm native american and i'm so sick of people telling me that i'm not like how are you gonna tell me i'm not native american like i come on here all the time i talk about how like i'm very native american i'm very cherokee like my mom's father was so cherokee that he could have signed up for a tribe like it's in my blood and then when people tell me that i'm not native because i don't know for whatever reason that they hate themselves and want to <laughs> project it onto me for i'm like how are you going to tell me I'm not native? Like, I, like, I see people online roasting Desi Perkins saying that she's not Mexican. How are you going to tell someone they're not Mexican? They're like, oh, well, she's so light skinned and she acts white. Why do you care so much? I know, I know your credit score has to be a 400. For you to be so worried about somebody else's life and what they're doing to the point where you're studying them and stalking them, your credit score has to be a 400. That's why you don't have a car. That's why you don't have a house. That's why your life is miserable. Work on your credit score before you check on me. Check credit karma before you check on me. Thank you. Someone had to say it. I'm not saved yet, clearly, but I will be one day. Anyway, native, and so I thought, oh, like, this is a part of my culture. It's part of my culture. Like, I should be doing this. Like, this is something that is going to bring me closer to my ancestors and my spirit guides and then i started to become obsessed with spirit guides and like it's so funny well, it's not funny but like i would look up these guided meditations on youtube and uh they would all be like connecting to your spirit guide and like how to connect to your spirit guide and a spirit guide is supposed to be something that is like above you and watching down on you and guiding you and every time i would sit down to do the meditations I would get so scared and I was scared because I wasn't supposed to be doing it because you're supposed to seek God and get guidance from him not from these like inanimate objects and I always knew there was something stopping me because I knew I had the ability if I really wanted to to like astro project which it has almost happened to me so many times I lucid dream every single night I've always known that I've had these capabilities but I've always been scared and like looking back I really just think that it was God having his hand on me and being like no we're not doing that because that's not what I want you to do and I remember I actually had an ex who was living with me well, he wasn't an ex then he's an ex now and i saw him a few years at a bar and we were talking and he was like are you still into like that new age stuff and i was like yeah i was like but i don't try i don't be trying to connect to my spirit guides no more that's pretty i'm sure and he was like every time that you'd go into your room and you would meditate and try to connect to them i'd be on the other side of the door praying for you like i would literally be praying to god for you and i look back now and i'm like yo thank god for you because that's probably why it never worked because you were on the other side of my door being like no and um no like literally you guys like it was bad like i was trying so hard to open my third eye to just do all these like crazy things and that's when my life started to go to absolute s-h-i-t i'm trying not to curse i, I i've been hearing that youtube has been like really strict with like demonetization i feel like i have nothing on my face like what can i do i did foundation i did concealer i did br blush i did bronzer oh highlighter duh so yeah i just that's when my life started to go like really bad like that's when me and my relationship ended up breaking up um this was not aging this was somebody else i ended up getting my hours cut at work i wasn't doing good in school um i ended up moving back in with my dad not because i couldn't afford the rent but it was because I really wanted to put my focus all in school and I knew that I couldn't do that if I was worrying about working 42 hours a week in order to afford my apartment all on getting $12 an hour and I made that shit happen for two years on my own with no help from anybody but it was getting really hard and I was like if I want to make something out of my life I need to move out and focus on other things and it just like everything fell apart the minute I started to dive into new age and i've spent like just countless years you guys you know trying so hard to get answers from tarot card readers from psychics mediums like clairvoyance and i just feel like it never made me happy and that's the thing with new age and like by the way 
this is not to talk down on it this is not to like talk down on if you practice it or anything i'm speaking from my personal personal experience that it never made me happy and the thing with new age is that they always have say to you that you have to always be like working on something so it's like once you heal this you will be happy but then this is going to happen and then you have to heal that but then you'll be happy but then you're going to be in um mercury retrograde and that's going to kill your life or oh if your sign is in this third house of jupiter then that's what you need to be looking for and that's why your career is failing and this sign in jupiter is going to be going through um a saturn return over the next two years which means that nothing good is going to happen for you and like it's so fear evoking and that's what really started to happen was i started to become scared like i would go on tiktok and see all these like astrologers and they would talk about pisces like readings basically and they would say things and i would take them on as my truth and whatever you take on your truth is your truth and so i would be like focusing on the things in my life that weren't right for me because this tarot card reader on tiktok was telling me to do so I woke up one day and i just realized like why am i chasing after my happiness like why am I like why am I constantly looking for answers and tarot card readers and psychics and clairvoyants? Why am I on TikTok all day scrolling, listening to all of these readings of like my ex is coming back and I have to do this and I have to do that and like your your twin flame is coming back and you have to get ready, you have to like purge and I'm just like why is it so hard? Like they make it just so freaking hard and it's just I don't know. I just I wasn't happy and the thing is is that nobody that I know who's in new age is happy nobody because you're always chasing after the next thing you're never content with where you are or you always have to purge something or learn something or go through this and that and it's just like i got tired of it this wasn't making me happy and there was one day before i even came to this conclusion i have this bookcase right there at the time it was horizontal and it stored all of my new age stuff so like i have tarot card decks i have like affirmation decks i have crystals sage palo santo i even one point started to get into like dragon's blood and um black soul for like casting away negativity and like all this stuff and i was heavy into like new age i, I never like did spells I definitely would do like candle work magic only slightly <laughs> and then i would do like the black salt around the beds to ward out unwanted visitors at oh my god spiritual baths with the florida water I had an altar basically full of those tools if i ever needed them and it was that bookcase back there but it was like lying flat horizontally and there was one day where i just wanted to use that shelf for something else i was like you know what it first turned into let's take all this stuff out so i could wipe down the shelf and then when i wiped down the shelf and all of like my new age stuff was like off of it I was like, this is like a really good bookcase. I should use it for something differently, like storage or whatever. I ended up packing that stuff away in this like crate. And I don't know what it was. Like I went to go take the stuff out and put it back on the shelf or just figure out where to put it. And something was telling me not to. Like something was like, no, keep it in there. I think that was like November. It was a while. It's been a while. Wow. Now that I'm like reflecting, it's been a while. And still to this day, I'm just called to like not touch it. And... Lately, I've been dealing with a lot of, like, paranormal activity in this room. Um, I think I've always told you guys, like, my room is haunted. Like, not on this side. This side is pretty good. That side over there, because my room is, like, a finished attic. So, you know, if you look like, the floors and stuff, it's, like, all finished. So, basically, over here is, like, my bedroom side. Over there is, like, my storage side. And it's the same size as this room, though. And I've always just used it for storage because I have always been scared to be over there. I've just always felt a dark presence over there, no matter what. I hate going over there. I hate even having to go over there if I need, like, my office supplies or extra paper or my scissors or, like, anything that I have to go over there for. I grab it and then I get the fuck out of there because it just feels so heavy. And I will hear things like I'll be downstairs and I will hear almost like someone's walking up here or I will hear something drop or things go missing. Like I'll put this right here on my desk and then it will be gone and then I will find it like in my drawer or something. It's like it's really weird. My friends like I've had two friends sleep over before. They have felt the same thing where they were like, dude, something is like on and you're going on in your room because I could not sleep last night because the presence in here is just like so heavy. And I was at one time I was on the phone with like um, somebody that I was dating at the time and we had like fallen asleep on the phone together. And um, he said that like 
he, he said to me one morning, he was like, when you wake up, go outside and call me. And I was like, why can't I just call you in my house? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, do not be in your room when I'm talking to you about this. And I had gone to like my car. Like he literally made me go to my car. That's like maybe two feet away from my house. And he was like, something is in your room like you need to get like a priest or like somebody to like come in there and like even talking about it, i just feel like ugh. but like he's like you need to get someone to come in there and, like check it out and i was like why and he said to me like he was on the phone with me um this was like years ago by the way but i'm just telling you how long this has been like going on he said that i was like talking to like something like he was like i heard it talk back to you like this like this is why you're not sleeping like something is like keeping you up at night <sighs> needless to say there's been some activity going on here for a while, but when I put that stuff away, when I tell you it got worse, like, I have not been able to sleep over the past two weeks, literally at all. Like, I get woken up at, like, three in the morning. I be hearing things, things drop. I hear stuff, like, moving over there. Like, I always just feel like somebody is watching me. I'm sleeping, and it's really uncomfortable, but if I sleep in my daughter's room, or I sleep on the couch, or I sleep, like, someone else's house, like, I'm fine. So, like, I know it's my room, which, like... I'm gonna be moving in a couple months which is really nice i'm probably not going to talk about that in this video because it's going to be way too long I, I just know i'm going to feel such a sense of relief like when i'm not here anymore but i feel like the spiritual warfare i've been experiencing since i have packed up my new age stuff and decided to like well, i've been talking about parting ways with it like this this girl she was on instagram and she was talking about the evil eye and if you guys know like i always used to wear evil eye bracelets evil eye everything and i would go so hard for new age like i even have a video i did like a, like three months ago where like somebody was like how do you you know justify believing in god while also believing in new age stuff it just doesn't make sense and i'm like what are you talking about like do you think god is really working up there alone obviously he has other people a crystal is an inanimate object like how could that mean that you're like praising something other than god like i was going hard I was going hard like you know if you were here i was going hard this girl was just talking about the evil eye and how it basically goes directly against like god and like it doesn't protect us like it's it's supposed to be there to protect but like you can't expect to wear like an object on your bracelet and just like be protected but if you call on like the holy spirit you're protected like that kind of thing i feel like i saw it for a reason and like a couple months ago before i did see this video um i was in the store I was at Hobby Lobby and I was only at that Hobby Lobby because I was cat sitting for my aunt and that day I was like really really low like spiritually like I just was not feeling good like it was like one of the worst days that I've had of my life and I was in the store and every five seconds I would turn a corner and I would see either like a wooden plaque or a picture frame or something that had the scripture where it's like Hold on. It's trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not only on your own understandings and all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths right time i would turn a corner with aubrey like i would see that scripture like i saw it three times in a row and just it's just crazy because i feel like god was like really calling out to me during that time but i just like wasn't listening and then when i saw this girl's video i ended up messaging her and basically being like hey i have lately been feeling like i want to part with like my new age stuff but like it's really hard for me to let it go and i don't know why like i still have it packed away over there and i cannot get myself to throw it away or to sell it or to like even just go put it like in my mom's basement i just like cannot get myself to do it and i'm like battling back and forth with myself and i'm like can i not get myself to do it because um i'm you know not supposed to walk away from it or is it that I'm supposed to walk away from it and the enemy is just trying to keep me in this like loop and you know she was explaining to me like you know yeah like the enemy is trying to keep you suppressed I mean oppressed and you know he's trying to keep you basically within his grip and he knows that when you let go of that that's like your first step to building your relationship with God and like the one thing the enemy does not like is when you build a relationship with God I know you guys are probably gonna like think that I'm absolutely crazy being like the enemy but it's like I feel like if you believe in God, you have to believe in the devil too. I just really have felt like I've had like a dark cloud over me just for such a long time throughout my life. And when I look back at the one time that I was actually happy, it's that time where I was reading that 12-step prayer book and getting into sermons and getting into pastors and all of that. And when I think about when my life went to shit, it's directly correlated with when I started to get into new age. I feel like I'm just really in this like up and down spiral of like, I don't know what to do. And I don't know what the right choice is for myself. But I went to Barnes & Noble and I found this Bible 
it's like $60 so I'm saving for it because I have a lot financially coming up at the moment and I'm trying to be responsible but meanwhile I just spent $70 on my nails I have issues anyway <laughs> I wanted to read it it's like a bible but it's like a it's like a broken down version. It takes all the scriptures and it will say the scriptures as they were written back in the day. But then on the bottom, it will give you translation as to like what they mean in like modern day society. And it just modernizes it so much. And I really was like reading it and understanding it. And I just felt like I was getting a connection to God and I felt it felt good. Like for the first time in my life, like something felt like I was doing something right or it felt good. And uh... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can anybody like down below tell me if you have gone through this? Have you given up new age? And I, the thing is too is I have so many people like in my comment sections on every, not every video, but a lot of video being like, you need to put down the new age and you need to just like give your life to God. You need to do this, this, and that. Trying to point me into the right direction. I feel like that's what I need to do, but it's also so scary because it's like new age has been a part of my life for a decade now, like a long time. And I feel like I'm giving up everything I've ever known. It's scary. It's scary because I know me. I'm an absolute. I'm like a black or a white. I am never a gray. It's either like a hell yes or a hell no for me. And I know once I give up new age that I'm not going back. Like I know once I give it up, I go into this walk with God that I'm going to be fully in that. And like I will not go back. It's like this relationship that you know is not the best for you. But you stay anyway because it's all you know. Like, it's familiar. I know this is going to come as, like, a shock to so many of you because I defended New Age for so long. A lot of my audience I connected to because we all meditate and because we all like to collect crystals and do all these things. Like, I don't know. It just, it's scary. Um, I'm scared. <laughs> but it's a good kind of scary. My life is just really weird right now. And... Yeah, so that's that. That's that. That's that's the tea on New Age. Another thing too is I have not had a sip of alcohol since December, and I have to say that I don't notice quite a, a difference because I wasn't a heavy drinker. Like I was a very heavy drinker in high school. I was definitely that person that was telling my mom that I was sleeping at my friends and I was getting blasted off of Everclear vodka and orange juice in the middle of the woods, like insane like horrible like how was i not taken like i really don't understand how i'm still alive I had any alcohol and i really have not had that much of a difference because i never like when i turned like 26 i think or 27 like i really did not drink like that like i would drink socially but like i never kept alcohol in the house even if i went out it's very hard for me to get drunk because i'm like super irish guarantee someone's gonna be like no you're not but i'm very irish and so something like within our blood that it takes a lot for us to get fucked up i love this combination you guys always ask me i love the nyx los angeles liner this is like the only one i use so affordable and it lasts literally forever i've had this for like two months and then i will use the fudge me next lip gloss and on top i will put the fenty as you can see this has been used fenty lemon lava gloss balm heat it's a lip plumper too it looks so good like i'm obsessed I just stopped like drinking like that because it became so hard for me to feel anything that i when i would go out with friends i would say to myself i'm not going to spend all this money just for me not to feel anything i'll buy one or two drinks and like call it a day like an espresso martini our Patron Eliminate or Margarita, but I never like really felt drunk a lot. So I feel like because I wasn't that much of a heavy drinker, that's why I don't feel much of anything. Like I don't feel like that much of a difference. But I have to say that it's been really hard to relate to people lately. I did I never realized how much of our relationships are solely focused on only alcohol. Like a lot of the relationships people have in their life would not be available if alcohol was not in the picture. And I just think that's so sad you know what i mean like we should have other things to do and relate to one another and correlate with besides alcohol consumption it's really hard for me to relate to anybody right now and it's really hard for me to have deep conversations with anyone right now because i just like nobody understands what i'm going through in my life right now i have so many changes that are coming up and some of you have guessed it already, and I have to say, don't be that person. Like, I posted a video a few months back where I was, like, telling you guys, like, that my whole life is about to take a whole 180 this year. And so many of you were, like, in the comments trying to guess what I was talking about, and a few of you were accurate, and those were completely deleted. Don't be that person. If I'm telling you, like, hey, guys, I'm gonna, going to make an announcement soon, or, like, I'm going to be talking about something soon... That means that I will tell you when I'm ready and when I feel like the time is appropriate. For you to, like, want to guess it and be in the comments, you are like that person in 
elementary school where we know that we have homework but the teacher has not mentioned it all day and so everybody's like don't say anything don't say anything and there's that one person always that one person that's like miss so-and-so don't we have homework due today and it's like why like like shh shh no but like for real like it's enough you're done like stop like don't try to be guessing in the comments what it's going to be i will tell you when i'm ready and don't ruin the surprise for other people like let's can we just please can we please just all just be on that understand? Thank you so much. I have so many things going on and I, I'm going through all these changes. Like I'm not drinking at the moment. I'm not like partying and going out and you know, all that stuff because like I just don't, I don't know. I just don't resonate. Like, trust me. I am the life of the party. I'm the turn up queen. Okay. So once in a while, if somebody wants to invite me out and turn up, of course I'm going to do that. Like, hello, I'm not boring. I'm not 60. I'm not on like life support you know like i'm not like on like oxygen but it's not what's taking up my weekends anymore you know like i'm just over those days where you wake up from a night of drinking coming home at 2 a.m eating mcdonald's and waking up and just feeling like so gross and lethargic your whole day is wasted because you're sleeping all day because you, you can't function because you don't have sleep and because you're dehydrated and like no electrolytes in your body like i'm just so past that phase of my life i feel like because of that it's very hard for me to relate to other people or like even make plans because so many plans revolve around alcohol and drinking and like i said i like to have a good time i like to turn up i like to be twerking on couches like don't get me wrong like that girl is still here like sasha is still here but like it's not the primary focus of my life anymore like friday night comes now and i don't even realize it's friday night because it just feels like a regular day to me <laughs> like that's like that, i don't know i don't think it that's because i'm getting older i think it's because i'm just outgrowing a lot of stuff and it doesn't mean like anything is wrong if you still like to do that it's just i'm finding it hard to like relate to people and have conversations with people because it's like oh what have you been up to and it's like oh girl i went out last weekend and i got so drunk and da 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 then people are like what have you been up to and i'm like i'm learning how to make fucking matcha from home <laughs> like you get what i'm saying i'm like i'm learning how to make my own iced matcha so i don't have to spend hundreds of dollars a month like <laughs> you know what i'm saying like what do we have to talk about <laughs> like i don't know does anybody else feel like that i don't know maybe i'm crazy maybe i'm crazy maybe there's something wrong with me but like it's getting lonely like it's getting really lonely i am out with people i have fun i have a good time but i just feel like i don't have much to contribute to like the conversation or to anything because it's like i'm not really a part of this anymore like i'm not this is not really like my life anymore so the things that i have to contribute to the conversation are things that nobody else is doing at the moment so it's like it's hard like you know it's hard to relate i don't I guess it's a part of life i guess it's a part of growing up but it, it, it's weird i'm in such a transitional part of my life right now and i look back at to how i was when i it was like 2021 20, so how old was i those three years ago like so i was like 27 i was just definitely in that era where aubrey i was a little bit older and you know you guys know i got pregnant at 19 i had my daughter at 20 so for the first part of my 20s up until like 26 27 i was busy being a mom i was busy going to school i was busy paying rent i was working full-time i didn't get that typical space of your life where you get to like experiment and go out and drink and do all these things and then discover like mm, i actually don't really want to do this i actually don't like this i want to do this instead like i have never i've always just been so focused on like my responsibilities and being a mom and being responsible like i have never had a period of my life where i was just like carefree and just doing what i wanted and only worried about me and i, I still haven't to this day and that's okay because i chose to go a different route than other people and there's nothing wrong with that but 2021 was like that time where like my daughter was getting a little bit older and i was getting some of like my life back like, i was able to like you know if, if i wanted like um, my mom to watch her or something i was able to do that like go out with my friends you know or like go like on a vacation for a couple days if i wanted to and i was experimenting and experiencing all this stuff and like it was such a carefree just great time of my life and i just like i had no care in the world and i was just doing what i wanted and having fun and back at that time in my life like i kind of miss it i miss who i was like i miss how i looked i miss what i did i wasn't happy like it's weird like i look back and, like i miss that but it's like also dakota you weren't happy you were like also like depressed you were like always seeking to find self-discovery and who you were and 
you didn't know your identity like i don't know it's like but i do like miss that like version there's some days where i wish i could just go back for one day and like live that part of my life again because I just, I just didn't care and now i just care so much about like who am i who am i becoming what career do i want what do i want my life to look like you know what i mean like now i'm just like so like involved the space that i was in at that time is not the space i'm in now i'm in a completely different headspace now and i'm doing different things and my life is just different and i feel like a lot of the people from that time their life is still the same which there's nothing wrong with that like i said but their life is still like here and mine is like over here not above or below but just like over here it's hard to stretch and come back together it's, it's weird it's it's weird i can't i can't explain it i just feel very like weird there's no other way to me i just feel weird i just feel like i don't belong like you know when you're in high school and you're just like trying to like find out where you fit in i just feel like i don't <laughs> and it can get really depressing and lonely sometimes but i also know this is like a part of life and like people are gonna eventually come to the headspace where i'm at too it's just i don't know i'm trying to like find ways to like do things with people that don't involve drinking i don't even know what i like to do without drinking it's 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 weird it's so weird it's like a lot of our relationships are based off of alcohol consumption and that's scary like why is it like that not to say i'll never pick up alcohol again like i love a margarita i love an espresso martini it's just for right now it's not happening and i'm just finding it hard to like shift i don't know i don't know anyway y'all that's where i'm at that's where i'm at that's my little life update i really hope that you guys enjoyed it i just really liked sitting here and like talking to you guys like i went through like a therapy session <laughs> literally and i just miss you guys so much and i am really sorry for the inconsistency i am like i feel like i'm just like always disappointing you all and it makes me sad because you guys make me so happy and like i would be nowhere without you guys but I just can't seem to get it together but i'm gonna try i'm gonna try really hard i said also what i'm gonna reveal to you guys soon is gonna make more sense you're gonna be like oh that's the reason like i get it now but yeah for the meantime i just have fun doing this video i really just had fun sitting down and talking and sharing and just doing what i love to do which is just talking and doing makeup and existing and i just appreciate you guys for coming and hanging out with me today i really hope you did enjoy it if you did enjoy it don't forget to give me a thumbs up don't forget to comment something down below anything that i just talked about if you've been through it and can give me some advice or support or just some anything <laughs> please do don't forget to follow me on my social media it's here but also link to the convenience i mean what link to the description for your convenience as well as questions as to like where i get my lashes or my lip combo and all the makeup products will also be down below um what else follow me on my podcast this let's heal i haven't posted in a minute there either but we're getting back to it we're getting back on schedule we're getting back to organization and discipline and all of that so yeah make sure you guys definitely check me out over there too i would love to connect with you guys over there i'm always on instagram i'm literally always posting stories just talking and just it, i could probably really get you through your day so if you really want to follow me over there please go ahead and just thank you so much for listening for subscribing for sticking around during my shit show which is a life and i love you guys so much and i will see you guys very 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 soon bye Baby, I wonder, would you just put your sweats on, put your sweats on me? Yeah. I got the plug.